Hi everyone, my name's Lou Sims and I'm here today to play with different stencils that you probably wouldn't normally put together. I'm going to be using Be Crafty's um, inkable stencils which come in a range of lots of different sizes but also I'm going to be using a few of their Queen Bee journaling templates. So these are the sort of ones that you would use for your bullet journals. So I thought it'd be good to try and combine the two together and come up with some you know totally different sort of designs so what i want to do first of all is i just want to mask off one of the larger circles and i'm just going to use repositional tape to actually do that okay right so i've just taped off the larger of the circles i want to use some of the other ones but i want to mainly focus on this one and i want to start by just creating a random background um i'm going to be working on a seven by five card front because i'd like to create a semi-flat sort of card so I'm just going to hold it down in place so it doesn't go for a walk. Um, and then I'm just going to build up a background of where I want these to be. I'm, I'm just having a think in my head. So I'm going to use oxides and I just want to use the circle to create the initial colour background. Right, so that's my starting point um, for my background. So I've got some coloured layers. I'm going to put this back down in place over the different circles that I've got. Um, and I'm just going to hold it down in place. And I'm taking the um, Fernando stencil. Um, and this is one of the larger inkable ones. And I'm just looking about where I'd like to place this on my design. Um, and this is where I enjoy the bit. This, it, you know, this is where you can have a bit of fun faffing with your design that you want to use. I'm going to hold mine down in magnets um, so I can see where I'm going. Because I've already done the circle, I can actually see which part of this stencil, the inkable stencil, I want to use only. And creating the background there really helps. So I'm just going to... just put that portion of the stencil in the circular area so when I take this part away I've now got that stencil design going in there I want to do some of them darker some of them lighter but I can now put this back over I'm going to go with a different part of the stencil this time So that's created a quick vibrant background for me and now I want to bring in some of the other smaller circles and I'm going to try and recycle my tape let's move you out of the way and I'm going to go for and the only reason I'm masking off is it takes the pressure of worrying that you're going to go and hit any of the other elements there so and I'm just going to bring in design because I want to just make this slightly bigger in places and smaller in places and I'm going to stick to the same sort of colours that I've been using. Right, so I've added an extra layer there and I then want to use one of the smaller stents circles here and I want to pick up some of the squeeze lemonade this time right so I've got a quite vibrant background there I'm going to put this one back on there and I've ripped the tape off but hey I'll just have to be careful because I can't oh let's see if I can squeeze it back on again oh 
but not too shabby. So as you can see, we've got a quick, vibrant background going on, linking one inside the others. And I now just want to build up on this pattern, but I don't want to make it too, too busy. And I'm going to bring in just some of the elements from the Queen Bee journaling stamps, just to add a little bit of depth and texture in different places for me. So my stamping matches in the background so everything just like blends into each other and that's the plan inside my head so i'm just going to bring some more detail into some of these others and into the smaller one so i'm going to start with the smaller one first let's work my way down and just build up a little bit more The stamping inside there is hardly noticeable, but it helps build up the background. Now, I've got a bit of an ink splodge there. Not going to worry because I can put my sentiment there. But that's the start of my background. I'm going to leave it there and we are going to decorate, but I just want to let the ink dry just that little bit more before I do the next stage. So I'm going to put that to one side and we'll get on with the next project. And when this is dry, I can carry on building this up. OK, for the second background I'm going to do, I'm still sticking to the Queen Bee templates and I'm going to use the square one on here and I'm using the um, the Inkables Fern Flourish. And I'm just going to stick that on the top there. Now, if I have to trim my card down, I will do, but I've just left it as is for the moment. I'm just going to hold all of this down with some magnets in place because I want to go and ink through both at the same time and I'm going to go for blues and greens this time and build up a bit of a background Right, that's a little bit of my background done and I'm just done with the green there and I just want to spritz a little bit of water, not much, in places. Probably be quicker if I just spritzed it personally. But... I'm just going to put that like that. And what I want to do is just take a spare bit of card and just mop up the excess ink. And I'm just going to hold it down with the magnets because it just makes it easier and I want to bring my little brayer in because it's not so much I want to pick the water up or the ink but what it does is using the brayer over the top of the um, ink balls in, in particular it will actually give me more definition to the um, pattern So now if you can see there where it's gone through and pushed, I can actually see a little bit more pattern, more detail. And this will be the starting point for another background. So let's take these away. 
and what I've done is I've actually created as you can see little squares subtly in so where I've got the white edges here I will trim my card down um, and, and that will be my background I'm going to let this dry because obviously I've splattered it and then we'll go over and do the next part that I would like to do with this background right I've taken another one of the inkables and this is the pearls and I've just stuck it down as I did before on my um, card front and I'm going to take different parts of different of the Queen Bee journaling just to add some detail in places now I'm not sure if I'm going to need um, tapers yet but we'll we'll go without and see see what happens she says sort of thing and see if it works and I'm just going to bring in a few different colors and we'll just see you know where it's going to go from there So combining the background together, as you can see, I've got a really different sort of funky design. So I'm just going to put that to one side and I want to bring in um, my first background that I've done because it's dry. Now, this was the first one we did and it's dry because I put lots of layers of the ink there and it was wet. And I just want to bring back into the pearls now on the top here and I just want to add a little bit of colour with the pearls so now by bringing in the same stencil with the circles i've created an, another sort of um background but everything links because it's actually got those circle designs on it Right, so I'm going to tidy up and come back and show you some of my finishing things that I would like to actually do to all of the card fronts. Bizarrely, my video cut off, but I'll explain where I got to because, oh. So I've taken the same stencil template from the Queen Bee and I've just used a black micron pen and gone around some of the circle elements. And then I've used another one of the templates and I've just added in a little bit of detail. And I'm just going to look and see where I might add a little bit more. Like I want to add some more detail around this side. And let's hope my video doesn't cut off this time again. So if you keep the actual template in place and then colour, you don't have to worry then about going outside the lines. So those are little pops of black. I might, once I've trimmed the card down, so I've taken away these edges here, I might look to see if I need to um, doodle in one or two other little bits of black. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave it and walk away and just go and do my other cards. Okay, taking this one back, it's now dry because obviously we splattered it. I'm going to put the template back in place. Now, if it's not 100%, I think that just adds to the originality of your work. I'm just going to hold it down just a little bit. And all I'm going to do is bring in the blending brushes I used before and just use up any ink that's on there. And I just want to pick mainly the corner areas.
so I can see now I was just going to pick the corners but then I got a little bit carried away with the blending so now I've still got all the whole of this background but the focal piece now is in the center here and I'm not going to add much more to it I'm just going to use a beautiful sentiment and I'm just going to add a few sequins or gems because I actually want the card to celebrate the background rather than anything else on it. So I'll just put you to one side and grab the other card. So I'm just going to add a little bit of stamp detail using the ICU stamp set. Because as I said, I, let's celebrate the background as well as the main image. Let's just move those off there. Okay, I've got to the stage where I'm actually happy with where my backgrounds are. I'm going to trim the cards down where there's an extra white space so it doesn't look quite so ugly in my eyes. And then what I've done in the in-between is, um, you know, taking the handwritten word set one, I've stamped out three different sentiments here. I'm going to chop them down, I'm going to add them to my card and just add one or two finishing touches. So whilst I chop all those down and just add them onto my front of my cards, I'll be back to show you the finished cards. Right, I finished faffing and I thought I'd share what I've done. So I want to make it a celebration about the background, about all the different stencils. So I've kept the, the sentiment and then I've just added a few gems on there just to match in with the design sticking to the similar colour palette that we've got on there. But the background you know, and the sentiment are the focal point. And then the second one here, I've just put the sentiment in amongst the actual frame I've kept. Um, because I like the sentiment when it says, when someone says you can't do it, do it twice, then take pictures. So this is like, in my head, like a mini Polaroid. And just one or two sequins just to add a little pop of colour. And because I love a sequin. And then finally... This one, I've just kept the sentiment really simple, just be you, and one or two sequins. So it's actually all about celebrating our backgrounds, not just all about the actual images at the end of the day, and mixing and matching stencils that you wouldn't think would go together, and then they suddenly do. So we mix the Be Crafty Large Ink Balls with the Be Crafty Queen Bee Journaling. So things that you would use for your boot, Bujos compared to things you would use for an art journal. They all work together. Thanks ever so much for your time. I'll put the links to all the products I've used down below and a link to Be Crafty. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.